September the 11th, 2001, is a day that has undoubtedly left a mark on many Americans and indeed many people around the world. The attack on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, claimed nearly 3,000 lives. Beside the tragic loss, the U.S. saw a rise in Islamophobia. According to a recent Pew Research Center study, 82% of Americans say Muslims are subject to some form of discrimination. Well, many American Muslims say they feel they are being condemned for crimes they did not commit nor condone. Ruhr Roman was eight years old in 2001. She was new into the U.S., but the dream she had of building a new life in a new home turned into a nightmare. She says, looking back at her young self, she is angry. She says, I was a kid trying to grow up and figure out my life. All of a sudden, I'd become an ambassador for a billion people around the world. Well, another Muslim man, Ashanti, says, as a child, I was just terrified all the time of anyone realizing I was Muslim and thinking I was a bad person. I felt like I didn't know who I was anymore because of the way the world saw Muslims. Was I the enemy? And this woman, Hanila, told us even though Muslims were killed in the attacks and Muslims were part of the frontline workers risking their lives to try and save so many in New York and beyond, Muslims were still being demonized and collectively blamed. And that, she said, broke my heart. My next guest is another Muslim-American working to combat Islamophobia in the United States. Faisal Abdul Ralph attempted to build a mosque and a community center at a location not too far away from the area of the 9-11 attacks, a plan that triggered intense controversy, causing the project to be shut down. Well, back in 2010, he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times saying, let us commemorate the anniversary of 9-11 by pausing to reflect and m mediate and meditate and tone down the vitriol and rhetoric that serves only to strengthen the radicals and weaken our friends' belief in our values. Well, the author of those words, Imam Faisal Abdul Ralph, joins us now live. One prominent institution that led the argument against building that mosque was the Anti-Defamation League. And just a few days ago, its CEO wrote an op-ed for CNN, apologizing for the position his organization wrote. He uh, took, he wrote, and quote, I believe the stance we took is one for which we owe the Muslim community an apology. Together, one can see how the Cordoba House could have helped to heal our country as we nursed the wounds from the horror of 9-11. Do you accept that apology? Absolutely, Becky. Uh, in fact, the Jonathan Greenblatt mm. uh, did a remarkable, uh, a remarkable turnaround. Took an incredible courage for him to do so. Uh, his uh, his message was mm. extremely well received in our community, and we received. I personally received many, many numerous emails and phone calls from people in our community saying, "Hey, let's this this appears to be the time to let us, uh, you know, build this entity again and what it what it what it in, what it meant and what it intended." And for someone like the CEO of the ADL to endorse this project, I think, mm. goes to show that uh, that there are many, many people in the, within the Jewish community who understood the the intentionality and the objectives behind the Cordoba House and its mission, in in, in being a place where where um, the best of what America means to the whole world, as a country that is that is predicated and dedicated the proposition that all men are, are equal, all human beings are created equal, and, and, and the, the, the American experiment of creating a, a society which aspires to be coherent in, in, mm. in spite of the changes of its being a, a cross-section of all of, of humanity. So mm. this, is, this is what the House is all about, to, be, to participate mm. in this, this important experiment of what America means to the whole world. Your vision through that project was to foster better relations between the Islamic world and America. How would you describe that relationship at present? Well, the, the relationship cuts across many dimensions. There's the political, the geopolitical dimension. 
the, uh, the, 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 you know, which is like, you know, the American presence and military footprint in many parts of the Muslim world, the uh, or an engagement in, 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 in their political affairs, which, is, which is, has been really the, been the primary issue causing much of the aggravation. In addition to that, there's also what I call the sociological dimension of American, I'm, I'm sorry, Muslim uh, communities recently immigrated within the last century to the West, to the United States and to other European countries mm. and, and, and trying to assimilate. And, and from, my, from, from what we know of what happened to previous faith communities and even um, uh, national communities that immigrated to the United States, it took typically three generations for an American Jewish community to evolve that, that had roots in America, mm. that felt American and felt equally American, equally Jewish. And when that happens, it becomes accepted. So part of the mission of the Cordova House was, was, to, was to accelerate that process. I want to talk about Islamophobia in the U.S. today and get your sense of, of, of what the situation is. And we've, just, uh, we've just related the uh, latest uh, Pew Research, which is, uh, uh, which is disappointing at best and, uh, and worrying, very worrying, um, at 82% of people believing that uh, Muslims have, had, have experienced some sort of discrimination or Islamophobic um, rhetoric or behavior. Um, look... Obviously, Islamophobia, as we all understand, grew a lot after 9-11. Unfortunately, it exists today. I mean, in the wake of Afghanistan's fall to the Taliban, for example, many people in the U.S. began spreading alarmist and, and Islamophobic disinformation in attempts to block Afghan civilians uh, getting, into, getting into the United States. Why, after 20 years, have, have, have we not moved on from this rhetoric? And, and how would you describe the state of play today? Well, I, I would say that the um, uh, that the the, the sentiments uh, that are expressed. I mean, look, Islamophobia certainly exists, and we're certainly very pleased that the the ADL, the Anti Defamation League, uh, under, its, mm. under its current leader, uh, has committed itself to working uh, uh, with the Muslim community to to combat uh, mm. anti uh, Islamophobia, anti anti Muslim sentiment. But having said that. There also has been a rise in, in, in anti-Semitism in the United States. Uh, mm. uh, the of the Trump years has been really to to amp up the 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 uh, the the differences in that exist in America and to polarize it. And and uh, you know uh, human beings are human beings are are people whose emotionality can be can be amplified and calmed down. So it, it, part, of the, part of the work of people like ourselves, uh, religious leaders, political leaders, uh, um, thought leaders, you know, in the media, et cetera, is to, is to contribute and to inform and to educate people so that we, mm. we, we, we rise up to the best in what it means to be human. We all have, every human being has, you know, their higher, their higher self and their worst self, our best days and worst days. And the same is true of a, of a society and a community. But, but we have to steer it. We have to lead it. Uh, and, mm. and this is the work that we all have to do together, you in the media, we in the, in the religious field, sure. uh, other, uh, our political leaders, etc. No, there is, a, there is a real responsibility on everybody. Um, look... I want to just uh, um, stick to where we are at today. I mean, this is, we are on the eve of 9-11. And in Afghanistan, um, the Taliban um, are in control. This is a radical Muslim group now in charge of Afghanistan's government. What do you make of that? Well, it's, it's impossible. Well, of course, we're, there's a sense of disappointment in what has happened in Afghanistan. But Afghanistan is a country which, which had the attention not only of Afghanistan. It's bordered by Iran. It's bordered by Pakistan. India has an interest in it. Uh, China borders with it. Uh, the, the, the Soviet Union or the ex-Soviet Union, Russia, is interested in what's going on. It's, it's on Chinese doorstep. So the, the vectors acting on Afghanistan are, are not just purely within Afghanistan. They are within the whole region. 
And, and, and that, that is why it requires a regional approach to, uh, to, to, to address this issue uh, of, of the stability of mm -hmm. the country. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, right now, there's concern, even in the media that we read in the Western media, that, that Afghan is, is on the verge of being a failed state all over again. Its economy is in shambles. Uh, you know, it's mm. whatever funds it has is being frozen. So uh, it's it doesn't all go well for the so, for the guys, and and it, it's difficult. So and and you, and you talk about other countries in this region needing to step up and and do what they need to do. We broadcast from from Abu Dhabi. I'm I'm here in the Gulf, um, and when we look at that kind of wider region, um, do you believe? Uh, Muslim countries are doing enough to address um, Islamophobia to prevent Islamophobia elsewhere in the States, for example? And if not, what more could they be doing? And that's an excellent question, Becky. I'm glad you raised that question. They can do so much more. There's no doubt in mind that they can do so much more. And uh, and we certainly uh, look to their to their assistance and help in uh, in in in, uh, in bridging this region because the fact of the matter is the United States has has major interests in that region. I mean, the the countries that were responsible for you know uh, helping negotiate the settlement, Qatar. I mean, the United States has a huge military base in Qatar a base in the Emirates, a base in Bahrain, you know, air base, whatever. We have like, I mean, we have a very heavy presence there. So the, 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 the interests, the mutual interests of the United States and these pretty wealthy uh, and, and, and countries who, who are able to punch way above their weight and their contribution and their excellent relationships with the United States, it behooves them to leverage that to, to help address the issues of Islamophobia, especially in the United States of America. Mm, fascinating. Look, we should talk again. Um, it's uh, look forward it's been to really good having you on. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'm glad to be here. God bless the world. <laughs>